The nutrition science major is an applied science that draws from both science and social science concepts. Within the nutrition major, you will draw upon your knowledge in biology, chemistry, and biochemistry to study nutrients within foods, how the human body digests and metabolizes everything we eat and drink, as well as how things like aging, illness, exercise, disease, and pregnancy affect our nutritional needs and metabolism. In addition to your science courses, you'll take several social science courses that focus on the psychological components that make up nutrition. These courses will help you evaluate what influences dietary patterns, what causes lasting changes in dietary behavior, and public health concepts that look at what roles government and businesses should have in providing quality food and promoting healthy eating practice. Going over the curriculum, in your first nutrition class you will learn the fundamentals of basic nutrition concepts such as nutrient structures, basic anatomy related to nutrient digestion and absorption, required intakes and functions of various nutrients, and how your body processes everything you eat and drink. You will first be introduced to the three macronutrients that are found in food. Some of you might be familiar with them, but for those who are not, they are carbohydrates, dietary fats, and protein. Later in the course, you will be given a brief overview of all the vitamins and minerals, their RDI, what food you can find them in, and their role in optimal health. You will also learn how to properly read food labels, calculate the number of calories provided by the three macronutrients, and understand percent daily value. In this class, you perform simple math calculations to determine an individual's BMI or body mass index and the calories required to lose, maintain, or gain weight. You will continue to use this information throughout the nutrition major and will continue to expand on the foundations you set in this class in subsequent courses. In your second year, you will learn about many different cultures in the United States and examine how each culture's traditions and values affects their food knowledge and behavior. At the end of this course, you will have a good understanding of how an individual's culture impacts their dietary behavior, preparation of food, social gatherings that center around food, and barriers to food choices that might be present within a given culture. This class is designed to make you familiar with other cultures so that when you begin writing dietary plans or create nutritional educational plans that involve individuals from various cultures, you will understand the psychosocial and cultural behaviors that impact food behavior. In this class, your professor might have you go out and try a food that you have never had before and write a report on it, or watch a movie and evaluate the food's role in the movie. You might also be asked to research a given culture and focus on how food has impacted their culture. In your second or third year, you will then begin more advanced nutrition classes. You will learn how our nutritional needs change throughout the life cycle. Similar to your first nutrition class, you will learn about required caloric and macronutrient intakes, vitamin and mineral intakes, and you will focus on what nutrients are more important at different ages and why. For example, you will learn the physiological reason for why women are disproportionately at risk for developing osteoporosis after menopause and why this population of women require an increased intake of calcium and vitamin D for healthy bone production. You will spend an entire quarter or semester studying how a mother's nutrient requirements changes through pregnancy and breastfeeding. You learn which foods are the best sources of various nutrients and the role of nutritional supplementation in a healthy diet throughout the life cycle. As mentioned earlier in this video, you will take a closer look at how the human body metabolizes various nutrients. Using the information you have learned in previous courses and your first nutrition class, you will examine the metabolic pathways of carbohydrates, dietary fats, proteins, vitamins, and minerals. You will be expected to draw various structures of carbohydrates, fats, individual amino acids which make up proteins, and some vitamins. In addition, you will learn how the body metabolizes these nutrients and will learn how vitamins and minerals play a critical role in cellular metabolism. It is incredibly important that you have a good foundation of anatomy and physiology from your support classes. This is because these classes take a detailed look at cellular metabolism within specific organ systems and places a strong emphasis on physiology in regards to nutrient metabolism. In the lab for this class, you might test or track blood glucose over time after eating a carbohydrate-based meal. Or you might run a full cell count on a blood sample when you learn about iron's role in blood cells. You might even calculate blood lipids within a blood sample. These lab techniques and lab results will help you understand the nutritional status of an individual based on the sample. This class covers a lot of material and integrates your knowledge of anatomy and physiology, best food sources for a given nutrient, and plenty of new material on cellular metabolism. In your fourth year, you will take a course called Clinical Nutrition or Medical Nutrition, which will apply your nutrition knowledge in a clinical setting. In this class, you will mainly focus on patients who are in a diseased state or are in poor health needing nutritional advice. 
As you progress through the course, you will become familiar with what certain blood work values might indicate. You will be asked to assess a patient's nutritional status based on lab values presented in case studies you are given in class. You will then become more familiar with the nutrition care process and learn the steps of prescribing a nutritional intervention for your patient. One of the most interesting things in this class is learning about how nutritional needs change during a variety of disease state processes. This could include burn patients, diabetics, or patients who have recently undergone gastrointestinal surgery. A nutrition tool you are sure to learn is the ADIME. This is a nutrition care process tool that allows registered dietitians to create measurable interventions after they have assessed their patients. ADIME stands for Assess, Diagnose, Intervention, Measure, and Evaluate. This tool will frequently be used throughout this course, and this course will provide you with a good understanding of what managing cases might be like if you were a registered dietitian. Later you'll take a class called Community Nutrition, which gives you an introduction to how government food policy affects people living within that community. This class is great for someone who is shaping their nutrition major to work in government and pursue a master's or PhD in public health or a related field. You'll learn how improving the nutrition of the community can impact the health of its population. The purpose of this class is to learn the techniques that promote wellness of an entire community with the intent to prevent disease. Community nutrition focuses on how public policy at the federal, state, and community level can impact the health of its community. You will spend a majority of your time looking at health statistics that look at large populations and might be asked to practice writing grants or develop community-based interventions to improve the health status of a given community. Another important class as a prospective registered dietitian or health educator is nutrition education and communication. In this class, you will learn how to influence changes in food behaviors and habits by applying appropriate behavior and learning theories. This class is designed to teach you how to improve your communication skills and you will learn how to present information to a diverse set of people. This class is related to community nutrition in that as an educator, you are striving to help influence food behavior that promotes wellness and prevents disease. You will learn about the potential barriers in place that prevent people from adopting new food behaviors and will be given strategies on how to overcome these barriers. Later you will take nutrition counseling which focuses on how to influence and teach new food behaviors to your patients. In this class you learn even more about the psychology of food behavior and are given techniques designed to help motivate change. You learn about eating disorders and obesity and will be given techniques on how to motivate a diverse set of patients. In addition, the food behavior techniques and interventions you learn will both be preventative and therapeutic. Like many classes, this class is designed to help promote wellness and instill long-term behavioral changes in your patients. The concentrations within the nutrition major will vary by school, but most schools focus on dietetics. In this concentration, you will take additional classes preparing you for your future dietetic internship and eventually a registered dietitian. As a registered dietitian, you would work alongside other healthcare professionals and play a critical role in improving the patient's health. A day in the life of a registered dietitian includes assessing patient's nutritional status, prescribing meal plans, giving diet strategies, participating in community health interventions, and providing counseling to doctors and patients related to nutrition. One important thing to note that students don't often find out until their third year when they start looking into internships is that getting matched or getting accepted into a dietetic internship is highly competitive and sometimes it takes students two or three times before they get matched. Furthermore, as a dietetic intern, you are not paid and you have to pay for instruction. Because of the time invested and the amount you have to spend to become a dietetic intern, this route is best suited for people who are truly passionate to work in clinical nutrition or hold a degree as a registered dietitian. Another common career path that nutrition and dietetic graduates follow is they become registered dietetic technicians. Dietetic technicians work to deliver safe quality food and nutrition services and play an integral role in healthcare and food service management teams. A dietech would use their knowledge in nutrition to create meal plans and run dietary analysis on patients' diets. Diet technicians can find work in hospitals, clinics, nursing homes, retirement centers, home health care programs and research facilities conducting patient-slash-client screens, health clubs, weight management clinics, and community wellness clinics just to name a few. In addition, many food companies and the places I listed earlier are in need of dietetic technicians for overseeing their distribution operations, developing menus, conducting nutrient analysis and data collection, and lastly, food service sanitation and food safety. The next most common nutrition concentration is nutrition science. However, the name your school has for this concentration might vary. 
This concentration is commonly used for students who enjoy studying nutrition but would like to pursue a career in the health sciences such as dentistry, medical school, physician assistants, nurse practitioner, or become nurses. There are a lot of students who major in nutrition and have no desire to go into healthcare or become a registered dietitian, so here's a list of careers that those students can go into with just a bachelor's. This is a long list which should display how many options you have when building your career. And you can just pause the video if you want to read these through. Now most of these careers would apply more to students with a concentration in dietetics because the additional nutrition classes you take involved with food management and human psychology. However, students that concentrate in the nutrition science concentration would be best fit for medical and pharmaceutical sales representatives, nutrition writers, brand ambassadors, and marketing specialists. A final note, I know of friends that have struggled finding entry level work directly within their field because like most science majors, a bachelor's degree is sometimes not enough. This is something to consider before choosing nutrition as a major, because although there are a lot of job options for nutrition majors, it is a challenging major that requires more science related classes than most people think, and skills you learn in this major aren't as marketable to the workplace. In addition, based on the list I've provided, if there's a career that sounds interesting to you, see if you can pursue that career without going to college. Some of the jobs might absolutely require a college degree in nutrition, but with other careers you might be able to work your way up once you get your foot in the door. An example of this is for these careers you could likely obtain your first job through a basic understanding of nutrition without a degree and go from there. If you want to be a registered dietitian or diet technician or enter healthcare college, you will need to attend college. However, for other positions within the nutrition and wellness field, it isn't absolutely necessary. This way you could start making money immediately, get experience, and by the time your friends graduate you will have had 4 years in exploring your career and no student loan debt. If you guys like this video, don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe, and I'll see you all next time.